Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing so, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right in their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. So for today's deck tech, it is kind of a special one for me. This is the first time that I've ever brewed or done a deck tech on a partner commander. And today it's going to be Ishai, Ojitai Dragon Speaker, paired with Kedis, Ember familiar. Commander Legends has put a bunch of new partners into the meta, so there are tons of possibilities for new decks, and I'm super excited about this one. I think that this could be a really powerful deck. So if you're unfamiliar with Ishai, Ojitai Dragon Speaker, is a legendary creature, Bird Monk, that costs two, a white and a blue. It has flying. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, we put a plus one plus one counter on Ishai. So Ishai is going to get very big throughout the game. And Kedis says, whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to each other opponent. So that is a super powerful ability and paired up with Ishai, who's going to get super big super quickly, we can do a ton of damage to our opponents. Something that's worth noting with Kedis is the damage that's going to be dealt to the other two opponents will not count as commander damage. So we can't really kill them with only doing 21 points of damage, but we are going to be dealing massive amounts of damage to our opponents. And the deck is going to be loaded with abuse using that and taking extra combat steps and double strike all that good stuff. So I've got the typical ramp that you're going to see in a Jeskai deck. With all of the mana rocks, we've got Soul Ring, Is it Signet, Azorius Signet, Boros Signet, Talisman of Creativity, Talisman of Progress, Talisman of Conviction, Wayfarer's Bobble, Arcane Signet, and a Sky Diamond. The deck is a little bit skewed towards blue, so just one Sky Diamond in there to help us hit our blue pips. So once we've got Ishai and Kedis out on the table, we're going to want to set up some ways of protecting them. So protecting Ishai and Kedis is absolutely vital to the deck. Both of them are super huge targets. And honestly, I probably wouldn't even put Kedis out until I'm ready to start swinging. So as for protection spells, we have Lightning Greaves, cost two mana. The equipped creature has haste and shroud and it equips for zero. Super great equipment. Swift Foot Boots is very similar. Uh, equipped creature has hexproof and haste, equipped for one mana. Very efficient, very good at protecting our commander. We then have Mother of Runes, also known as Mom. A Mother of Runes can tap to give target creature protection from the color of our choice until the end of turn. So this works in response to a kill spell or some other type of spell that's going to remove our commander. We can tap Mother of Runes to give our commander protection from the color of that spell. It also works with getting Ishai in if our opponent happens to have flying blockers. We can just give a protection from the color of our opponent's creature that has flying so we can get through with it. We're also playing Reality Ripple, which is a super old card that I think is kind of unique. Target artifact, creature, or land phases out. We can use this defensively on Ishai to protect it from being killed or we can use it defensively to stop a big attacker from hitting us just has a lot of utility in the deck and then we're running hindering light it's a really efficient counter spell it can counter target spell that targets us or a permanent we control and we get to draw a card i think that this is super relevant a lot of the spells are going to be directed right at ishai so being able to counter it and replace itself is super useful so in addition to these protection spells we are also playing a pretty wide suite of counter spells because while it is important to play spells to protect ishai we don't want to just play protect spells so we want a ways of interacting with our opponents as well so kind of two birds for one stone so we have Dovin's Veto it can't be countered and it can counter any non-creature spell negate can also just counter any non-creature spell we're playing two counter spells that can untap our lands with unwind and rewind we're then playing stubborn denial which can counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays one if we control a creature with power four greater we just counter the spell instead they don't have a chance to pay that mana with ishai out it's going to be very frequently over power four so stubborn denial is just always going to work as a one mana counter spell we're then playing narset's reversal which isn't necessarily a counter spell but it is very useful of maybe bouncing a spell that's going to kill ishai back to its owner's hand and maybe us getting to copy it pointed at something else could be looked at more of a value piece but i put it in the counter spot and then we're playing muddle the mixture which is I, i've been putting this card into a lot of decks i think transmute is a super powerful ability there are plenty of things in this deck that we can transmute for that only cost two mana so i think it's worth it in here and it can counter target instant or sorcery spell a lot of removal spells are instant or sorcery so muddle the mixture is super useful in this deck the next category that I kind of want to go over is synergy with spells. So I haven't gotten to all of the instants or sorceries in this deck, but we are playing a lot. And for that reason, I've put in a lot of cards in the deck that care about instants or sorceries. So we're playing a bunch of creatures that deal damage to our opponents every time we cast an instant or sorcery spell. So we've got Electrostatic Field, which will deal one damage to each opponent. Firebrand Archer is going to do the same, one damage to each opponent. 
Gutter Snipe is going to deal two damage to each opponent, and Thermal Alchemist can tap to deal one damage to each opponent, but whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we get to untap it. And then we're playing Kaikar, which whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we get to make a 1-1 white spirit, and we can sacrifice a spirit to add red to our mana pool, so that's also super useful. With these pingers in the deck, there are some cards that work really well with them, and we call those curiosity effects. So these are effects that let us draw cards whenever the creature deals damage to an opponent. So cards like Tandem Lookout, which has Soul Bond, the creature that it's soul bonded with will draw you a card every time that creature deals damage to an opponent. Curiosity is the same thing, but it's an aura, and Ophidianite is also the same thing, but it's an aura. So essentially, if we can put these on our Electrostatic Field or Firebrand Archer or Thermal Alchemist or any of those creatures that I just listed, every time we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we are going to be drawing three cards when they deal that damage. Also works super well with Kedis because if we can enchant or soul bond Tandem Lookout, specifically with Ishai, every time Ishai deals damage to one opponent, it's going to deal damage to the other two, thus drawing us three cards every time Ishai deals combat damage, which is super powerful, and we're really going to need that to keep our hand nice and full to protect Ishai and to interact with our opponents. So in addition to though, in addition to the curiosity effects drawing us cards, let's go over some of the other cantrips slash draw spells. So we've got Brainstorm, which at instant speed lets us draw three cards and put two cards from our hand back on top of our library. And then Preordain, which lets us scry two and then we can draw a card. And then we have Ponder, which lets us look at the top three cards of our library. We can put them back in any order or shuffle. And then after that, we get to draw. And then we're playing Frantic Search, which lets us draw two cards, discard two cards, and then untap three lands. And then Windfall, which is a super powerful wheel. Each player is going to discard their hand and then draw cards equal to the greatest number of cards discarded this way. We're then playing Pull From Tomorrow, which is a really good X spell. Um, we get to draw X cards and then discard one card. And then we're also playing Jeskai Ascendancy, which is a super powerful enchantment that does a lot more than just being a draw spell. Whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we get to untap all of our creatures and they get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So essentially this gives all of our creatures prowess, which is really powerful. And then whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we can draw a card and then discard a card. So this is going to be super useful in making our team really big, specifically Ishai, so we can deal a ton of damage to our opponents. We're then playing Whirlwind of Thought, which I have waited a long time to jam into a deck. Whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we just get to draw a card. So all of our instants and sorceries, our mana rocks, some of the other enchantments we're playing, all will lead to us drawing more cards, which is very powerful. And then finally, we're playing Vanish into Memory. This is a super interesting card. Um, I'm really interested to see how this card works. I've put it in here because I think it could be really useful with the deck. So we get to exile target creature, and then we draw cards equal to that creature's power. And at the beginning of our next upkeep, we return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. And if you do, we have to discard cards equal to that creature's toughness. So there's a lot going on with this card. It's kind of all over the place. I think that we're going to use it sometimes a little bit defensively to exile a big creature that's attacking us and we get to draw a bunch of cards. And then hopefully we can use those cards before we actually have to discard them. And that creature does come back into play, but, but I think that this card is worth playing. We could even use it on Ishai theoretically if it gets super big and we're, we really need to dig for an answer. I think that might be a corner case, but I'm excited to test this card. I think it could be pretty good. Next up, let's go over the removal. So ways we have of just interacting with our opponent's board. So let's start with the things that we have to get rid of creatures. So we've got Reality Shift, which at instant speed can exile any creature, and then the controller of that creature will manifest the top card of their library. We then have Pongify and Rapid Hybridization, each of which at instant speed can turn a really big creature into a much smaller token creature. We then have Swords to Plowshares and Path to Exile, which probably the best removal spells in white, maybe some of even the best removal spell just in Commander. Instant speed, one mana each, we can exile a creature. The controller of that creature does get a little bit of a downside, but totally worth playing. We're then playing Generous Gift and Chaos Warp. At three mana each, they can deal with a permanent. Chaos Warp will shuffle that permanent back into its owner's library. They will shuffle their library, reveal the top card. If it's a permanent, it goes into play. If not, it's just exiled, so that's pretty cool. Generous Gift will destroy any permanent and its controller will make a 3-3 green elephant creature token, so uh, not a super good trade-off for the person we're hitting with this. And then next up, we have Winds of Abandon, which lets us exile target creature we don't control, and then for each creature exile this way, its controller searches a library for a basic land and then puts it into play tapped. It can also be a board wipe if we overload it for four white white. We will exile all of our opponent's creatures. They will go and find basic lands, but it's probably going to be worth it to clear the board away. But I've put it in here as a target removal spell. And then I'm playing Wear and Tear, which is just super efficient for what it does. Being able to destroy target artifact and target enchantment, or both for three mana, super useful. Glad to have it in the deck. All right, now with those cards out of the way, let's go over the ways that we have in the deck of closing the game out in addition to just playing Ishai and swinging with it. 
Sometimes it's not going to be enough to just hit an opponent once. Um, sometimes we're going to have to do a little bit more than that. So we've got ways of taking extra turns or giving Ishai a uh, double strike. So starting this off, we have Seize the Day, which lets us untap target creature. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. For four mana, that's a super powerful effect. And Seize the Day has flashback, so we can cast it from our hand, attack with it, do a bunch of damage, and then flash it back from our graveyard either that turn or another turn to do even more damage and get another combat step. So super powerful card. After Seize the Day, we have Response to Resurgence. This is a split card that we're going to want to be casting the more expensive half, which is Resurgence. So for five mana, creatures we can Control, gain first strike and vigilance until end of turn and after this main phase there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase so we cast this in our second main phase after we've attacked with Ishai and then we get to attack again super powerful effect and then response can deal four damage to target attacking or blocking creature that could be pretty useful but mostly this is in here to give us extra combat then we have some ways of giving Ishai double strike with teamer battle rage which will give you know target creature double strike at instant speed and if that creature is power four or greater it's also going to get trample then we have duelist heritage which whenever one or more creature attack we can have target attacking creature gain double strike until the end of turn we can kind of use this a little bit politically i'm just gonna have to say it. if one of our opponents creatures are attacking another opponent and it's our in our best interest to you know give that creature double strike we can do that but more often than not we're just going to be giving ishai double strike to do a ton of damage to our opponents and then we have fiery emancipation which is the most expensive card in the deck, but I think it really belongs in here. It's a massive enchantment that says, if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage to that permanent or player instead. If we can sequence this right, get Ishai, Kedis, and then Fiery Emancipation out, the game is going to be over very quickly. We're then playing some artifacts that will make Ishai a little bit more powerful. The first one is Blackblade Reforged. I really like this card in this deck. Blackblade Reforged is a legendary artifact equipment, and it gives the equipped creature plus one, plus one for each land we control, and it costs three to equip to a legendary creature. So this is really good. We can put it on Ishai, get it massive, and take our opponents out, but we can also put it on Kedis if that needs be. So what we can do is we can swing Ishai at one player and Kedis at another and then Kedis will deal damage to each of our opponents for Ishai and itself so that is also super cool it shouldn't be forgotten that we can pump up Kedis too and make it super powerful and then we have Sunforger and it's an artifact equipment that gives the equipped creature plus four plus so which is a really big power buff but also has an amazingly powerful ability for a red and a white we can unattach Sunforger to the equipped creature to search our library for a red or white instant card with converted mana cost four or less and we can cast it without paying its mana cost so this is super good we can use this at instant speed to go and find our teamer battle rage or to find you know a swords to plowshares or a path to exile or one of our removal spells to deal with one of our opponent's threats it does suck that it has to be an instant or red and white but i think that this ability is, is worth it just to tutor up teamer battle rage and then finally for this category, we have Narset of the Ancient Way. It is the only Planeswalker in the deck, and it kind of does a lot of different things. It comes in with four loyalty, and it's plus two, gives us two life. We can add a blue, a red, or a white that we can only spend on non-creature spells, but we're playing a lot, so it's okay. Her minus two is we can draw a card and then discard a card, and then when we discard a non-land card this way, Narset of the Ancient Way will deal damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to target creature or Planeswalker. So her minus two can be used as some card draw and some removal, which is super useful, but her minus six can gives us an emblem that says whenever we cast a non-creature spell, this emblem will deal two damage to any target. I was a little bit hesitant putting this into the deck, but she starts out at four and her emblem is at six. So she's already really close to six when she comes into play. And I think this emblem is going to do so much work throughout the game. We have a lot of non-creature spells, specifically instants and sorceries. So this is gonna rack up a ton of damage really quickly. And then the final category that I'd like to talk about for this deck are the board wipes. So we're playing Wrath of God and Day of Judgment, which are effectively the same card for four mana. They will destroy all creatures. And then we have Cleansing Nova, which has two modes. We can either destroy all creatures or all artifacts and enchantments. Depending on the meta, this could be absolutely backbreaking to blow up all artifacts and enchantments or destroy all creatures. I really like the versatility and I'm starting to put Cleansing Nova into more decks. I think it's super great. And then the last board wipe that we're playing is Blasphemous Act. It's a massive nine mana spell, but it costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. And it's going to deal 13 damage to each creature. And there's probably some games where that won't even kill Ishai, depending on how many spells our opponents are casting and how well we've been able to defend it. So Blasphemous Act is super powerful in this deck. And finally, let's go over the mana base. I've tried to keep it incredibly budget. Um, if you have shock lands, fetch lands, obviously put them in. We're playing a couple of bounce lands with Azorius Chancery and Is It Boilerworks. And then we're playing Battlefield Forge, Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Myriad Landscape, Terramorphic Expanse, Mystic Monastery, Inspiring Vantage, Exotic Orchard, Prairie Stream, Shivan Reef, Swiftwater Cliffs, 
the Three Temples, Temple of Enlightenment, Temple of Epiphany, Temple of Triumph, Tranquil Cove, Windscarred Crag, and then we're playing eight islands, four mountains, and five plains. And that is my Ishai and Kedis deck. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Really appreciate your guys' support. Also, a super huge thank you to all of our patrons and all of our subscribers. If you like our content and you haven't subscribed yet, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Helps us out a lot and you'll stay up to date on all of the content, all of the deck decks, all of the gameplay videos that we're going to be producing and releasing over the coming months. And if you are interested in supporting us directly and becoming a Patreon, you can head on over to patreon.com slash commandvalley. Supports us directly, you get exclusive content, access to our Discord, merch, and a ton of other perks. Another quick reminder that if you go through the link in the description below to Game Grid to purchase this deck or to purchase singles there, that really helps out the channel too. And one last reminder to follow us on social media at Command Valley P1 and to like us on Facebook and links for those will be in the description below. One last huge thank you to all of you who watched this video. We really appreciate you guys and I hope that you have a wonderful week.